Hiya, Martin here. Welcome to Turner's Journey, Episode 9. Before we get going, I must say a big thank you to everybody who has commented on Turner's Journey Episode 8, as well as Fifi. Uh, there's still an ongoing conversation with Fifi, um, and anybody who's left comments on other videos as, um, this week as well. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, if I haven't already. Um, sorry that there hasn't been um, a full turning video this week, uh, but as you'll see, I've been a touch busy uh, in the workshop but I'll give you a little um, workshop tour uh, in a little while. Thank you, Mike, Mike Walt, uh, for your shout-out of my channel this week, as well as Hampshire Sheen. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you, uh, how you get on with it. Uh, and your video of the circle-cutting jig on the bandsaw is just pure genius. If you haven't seen it already, hop over to Mike's channel. I'll leave a link in the, uh, in the description below. Take a look at Mike's uh, um, videos as well as the circle cutting jig for the bandsaw. It's genius, brilliant. A uh, couple new, couple of new channels I'd like to mention. Um, the first one is Steve Twydell in um, in Ireland. His uh, his brand new channel, Temple Boy Turnings, uh, he launched this week, and at the moment he's in. He's just published the first part of a three part uh, coloured pencil project which uh, which looks to be fabulous um he sneakily uh, sent me a couple of pictures of the final the final items which are uh, which are brilliant so hop on over to temple boy turnings again i'll leave a link in the description below and also rob summerlin who i think is one of steve's best buddies um rob summerlin in canada uh, he's just started a channel called woodsley summercraft i'll leave a link in the uh, description for that um, as well Two brand new channels with a couple of great guys hosting them, so do pop on over and take a peek at them as well. Right, Cherry Bowl. Cherry Bowl, here is the Cherry Bowl. Um, there is a slight warp um, coming on the Cherry Bowl. Um, not quite sitting flat anymore, but that could be because there's some crud on the bottom. Um, but yeah, last week the Cherry Bowl weighed 1,543 grams. This week weighs 1,511, which is a difference of 32 grams. Um, so with all of the rain that we had last week, um, when it lost only 14 grams, this week we're back up to 30-odd. Um, um, so yeah, we are still losing weight, which is, uh, which is good. Right. This week in the workshop, um, yet again, virtually, well, no turning at all done this week, which um, is quite frustrating, especially as we are on the run up to Christmas. Um, and over the last nine weeks, I can probably count on two hands the number of items that I've actually turned. But, as you can probably see, the workshop looks um, a bit different. Um, I've worked really, really hard um, over the last six days. On, uh, on improving the look um, and the feel of the workshop. So let's take a peek at what, um, what's been going on. First up, the outside of the shop has changed. Um, I used to be in just a, just a double garage and used to do all my work with the, with the garage door up, um, or at least most of the way up. But now we've taken off the, the garage door and replaced it with a wall, a window, and a, a smaller door. Um, but still wide enough to get through fairly large, um, fairly large bits of wood and equipment and stuff like that as and when I need to. And also, oh, an outdoor cupboard for the extractor fan, um, which is great. It makes the uh, it makes the shop a lot quieter, or well, will make the shop a lot quieter when I'm doing my turning videos and also uh, general turning off camera. Uh, that took uh, that took two days. Um, I've also painted the front of um, the whole double garage here um, a nice autumn red colour, which um, which when the sun sets over there uh, makes the whole front look like a fire station. And inside the shop, um, the big uh, wooden shelving thing that was here, I've, I've taken that out and extended the workbench round by about another six feet. 
Um, there are some shelves underneath, as you can see, and under here is all of my stuff, all of the stuff that I use to produce Hampshire Sheen. Uh, and under here is just sort of assorted tools and other bits and pieces that, uh, that I use occasionally. And then down in the darkest recess of, um, of the shop, um, I've got the slimmed down table saw. Uh, as, uh, as I realised, I don't actually use the, uh, the wings of it um, very often, so I've, uh, I've taken those off so it fits nicely next to the sanding wheel, which um, is the headstock of the old lathe. Um, this has got a blast gate on for the extractor which I haven't been able to connect just yet. So the table saw is going to connect to this, uh, this uh, extractor pipe which will then go on to the pen lathe. So here's the pen lathe. Um, I've managed to um, make its workbench a little bit smaller because there isn't, um, I don't turn very big stuff um, on here. So the extractor goes from the table saw, or will go from the table saw, to the sanding wheel, to the pen lathe, um, and there's a, a dust collecting chute, which I, I've, I've tried it, it works quite well. Um, and then under down here is um, a homemade blast gate. That works. Um, I think I'll probably end up putting another shelf um, up here. Uh, and then over here I've got all the... Um, all my pen kits and stuff, and um, a raised up pen press. And then back at the main lathe, um, you've seen the main lathe. You see that all. The, you see that pretty much every week. Um, this one has got its own um, dust uh, dust hood, um, as well as its own um, blast gate for the extractor. So they're all connected by blast gates, and then the whole lot goes over the roof down the wall and outside and uh, it all sounds a lot nicer um, and it's a much um, it's a much more pleasant um, environment I've noticed um, to work in uh, although I only finished it yesterday um, I'm very much looking forward to making some shavings and um, making a mess right <coughs> yeah now we're coming up to the Christmas season and the holiday season and stuff, so everybody's thinking about making Christmas ornaments and decorations and little gifts for the kids and stuff. Um, but trying to find the right price point can be tricky um, because some items are going to take a long time, others are going to take less time, you know, that, that kind of thing. So trying to find the right price to pitch an item can be difficult for people, um, not just wood turners but crafters in general. So how do you go about pricing an item? Now you could just pick up an item and go, oh that's, that's worth $10, 10, 15 quid or 20 quid or whatever. But that isn't going to really be enough. That might be okay for the hobbyist, but for somebody like myself or somebody that wants to make a little bit of money from their wood turning, then they need to be thinking a little bit more seriously and in depth about the amount of money that they charge for an item. Now Etsy, um, Etsy.com have quite a simple um, equation to work it out and it's materials plus labour plus expenses plus profit equals your wholesale price. Now the wholesale price is the price that you sell to a shop who will then sell it on for the retail price which is twice the wholesale price, as suggested by Etsy. So materials plus labour plus expenses plus profit equals the wholesale price. Multiply that by two gives you the retail price. So, let's say, just to keep things easy, you have a £10 bowl blank, or $15, so, but we'll work in pounds because I'm in the UK. You've got a £10 bowl blank, it takes you an hour to make it, let's call that eight pounds an hour to pay yourself, so that will be an expense. Um, sorry, that will be labour, so we're up to 18 pounds, and then two pounds for expenses, so um, abrasives and wax and stuff, two pounds, so that's now 18 quid, and you want to make some money, that's profit, um, you want to make some money on that, so that add, say, a fiver 
uh, five pounds for your profit, that makes your uh, the wholesale item twenty five quid, twenty five pounds. Then you multiply that by two, and you come up with a retail price or a suggested retail price of fifty pounds for a ten pound bowl blank. Now you might look at an item and think, is this bowl worth fifty quid? Yes or no. So when you're it's it's really difficult. It, it, it's really really difficult because a lot of stuff that I turn um, is going to be fifty, sixty pounds worth, something like that, probably um, all all in with the texturing and and stuff like that. But if you know your market, you need to. I think anyway, you need to add a healthy dose of common sense. So if if your item works out along that equation to be say one hundred and twenty pounds. You've got to think, well, the market I'm going to, or the market I'm in at the moment, isn't going to be prepared to pay £120. So you've got to add a dose of common sense into your final price, your final selling price, um, that will be attractive to your market. So if the bowl is worth 120 quid retail, that means the wholesale price is about 60 quid if you work it out on this equation. So the wholesale price is 60 quid, retail is 120. So you've got 60 pounds to play with. Um, so you, 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 can, you can take some money off of the retail price before you get down to your wholesale price. If you start selling below your wholesale price, then you're going to be losing money, which... Um, isn't very good business sense and it, it's just a bit foolish. So you're better off taking the money off of um, the end of the equation between the wholesale and the retail in order to find or hopefully find a price point that is suitable for your market. And that's really difficult because as creative people and artists a lot of us are self-deprecating because we do what we do because we love it. Yes, we, we absolutely love what we do, but why should we charge less for something because we love it, when in fact we could possibly be charging more? Now, the, there are millions of bowls um, out there that are mass-produced um, all over the world. Take IKEA, for example. You can walk into IKEA, you can get a really nice wooden bowl and take it home for maybe £12, £6.99, something like that. And you've got a really nice wooden bowl. But then, so does John and Jane down the road, and so does Bob and Frida. They've got exactly the same bowl because they went to Ikea too. The thing that sets us apart as turners is the fact that all of our items are absolutely unique. Um, especially people like myself who are not production turners. We don't turn out bowl after bowl that are identical in shape. The only thing that's different about each bowl is the figure in the wood. Every bowl that we turn is completely unique. An absolute one-off. The shape is going to be different every time. The wood obviously is going to be different every time. The finish is going to be different every time. And that's where we as artists need to be carefully educating the public. Um, we need to be very carefully educating them um, about the fact that this bowl, this bowl is a one-off. You will never find another bowl exactly the same as this in its shape or colouring. And trying to get that across to people sometimes is, is difficult. Sometimes it's very, very difficult because they're either not in the mood to spend £60 on a bowl, they may not be in a mood to spend £10 on a bowl. So the way you communicate that to people is, I think, or certainly the way that I do it, is by going through the production process of a bowl that I've made. I explain to them about how it's mounted on a lathe and how, how I use traditional tools to make it and it's hand sanded and, and, and all the other bits and pieces like that and then people begin to get some kind of appreciation for the work that you do because people see bowls in Ikea and supermarkets and stuff like that all the time <clears throat> and they want to know what sets you apart so spend some time with your customers have a chat with them uh, and what I've what I've done in the past is taken um, 
uh, taken my little tablet, my little um, Android tablet along to a show with me, with some of the videos that I've made on there, and actually show them the process. Um, so there's another reason, um, I mentioned it a little while ago about YouTube being a good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a good sales tool, because you can show people exactly what your, exactly what your process is. Um, and that's great. And then they might be able to justify spending 50, 60 pounds on a bowl that has been created by a person rather than a machine. It's been hand done. You know, there's there's a little bit of our love and a little bit of our soul in everything that we make, uh, and that needs to come across in your sales patter and also in the price. So somewhere there's got to be a little dose of common sense that says to people, this guy's made this bowl and he's charging 60 quid for it but you've got to be in the right market to charge your full retail price uh, and the rest of the time you need to err on the side of caution and sell at a price that's right for the market so if you've got a, a, a piece like golden fire for example a highly decorated piece or a piece that's taken you hours and hours and hours that is going to be pretty expensive taking it down to your local craft market or church hall is probably not going to be the right place to sell it so when you're looking for places to sell your stuff you need to be finding uh, finding a, um, a market that has a reputation for being good for selling high-end items otherwise stick with I would suggest sticking with your, your normal standard bowls that you can knock out in a couple of hours um, you know and that that kind of thing. So that's something that I'm thinking about when I'm booking up uh, uh, markets on the run up to Christmas and, and, and shows and stuff like that. So that's really, really important um, is, is pricing your items uh, correctly. And also at these markets, you know, you can negotiate a little bit, a little bit on price. You know, if somebody's umming and ahhing about a, um, a 50 pound, a 50 pound bowl, then you can say, mm, you know, it's taken me, you know, it took me two hours to make it, three hours to make it or whatever. Tell you what, I can see that you want it, let's go for £45. And you, you, you can negotiate a little bit, you can be a little bit flexible if you, uh, if you need to. But I wouldn't recommend it, um, because obviously if you knock some money off, then, um, then you're going to be out of pocket. Or what you could do is if you've got some spinning tops or light pulls or something like that, you could add, you could say, okay, I can see that you want it. If you buy the bowl, I'll give you a light pull to go with it. And if and if it's out of the same wood, then even better, you know, so some something like that. Yeah, so there's there's loads to think about on that point. And I know price price points are always a bone of contention with people, especially when there are a lot of hobbyists out there that um, that do just want to sell just to make back their expenses and stuff, which is absolutely fine, but for full-time turners and people that want to go full-time, um, not just as turners, but artists in general, then, you know, you've got to, you've got to be, um, got to be careful, I suppose. Now, this week, um, Hampshire Sheen has been going okay. Um, I do need to do a promo video um, about it. I said that a couple of weeks ago, but I need to do a promo video and also a video um, about how to use it so I can put that on on the website but I might be able to combine the two into one short video just be a minute or two long something like that so that that's a job for probably next week um, or maybe even this afternoon um, I've got a I've got a nice oak bowl blank that I can use um, for that if you are a subscriber to Turner's Rest, my online magazine, then I must apologise for the um, early edition that I posted out on Wednesday. Um, I was sat, uh, I was sat in the car, looking for more content online, and I hit the publish button instead of um, um, the save button. So yeah, sorry about that. So the edition that's out on this coming Sunday is going to be a little bit thinner. <laughs> Um, a little bit lighter than uh, than uh, than it should be, but um, I'm going to find some um, Halloween type um, videos and pictures and um, turning related articles and stuff like that. Next week, um, I will be definitely be doing um, a full on turning video, and I think it's going to involve some lead. I think it's going to involve some lead. I'm not sure. I need to think about 
applying lead to wood, um, molten lead, and how that's going to uh, possibly affect the wood and stuff like that. So, yes, um, a big, big, uh, big new project for next week definitely will be involving lead. Hmm. Right, that's it for now, folks. Thank you very much indeed for watching. If you've got any comments um, about um, the pricing of items, then please do leave them in the comments below. It would be great to have a conversation with you um, about that. And if you've got any other feedback about the shop or anything like that, then, uh, then leave a comment below. If you've subscribed recently, thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do hit that subscribe button. And I will see you all again next week for a new project and a week today for Turner's Journey Episode 10. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.